So welcome from this winter wonderland. I'm talking to you from the warmth of my own home and I hope that you also are warm wherever you are. Uh, Galilee and all of our friends are praying that you all stay warm and safe during this blizzard of 2016. So we're encouraging people to work, worship at their houses. Um, on the website you'll find the Today's Focus which gives some study questions and a way to do a devotion time together. Also the Family Home Worship Guide is on the website as well. And please, your generosity makes possible all of our ministries at Galilee. So click Give Online, and I really appreciate you doing that. wanted to start with a little time of prayer together. We certainly want to lift up those who may be outdoors for work or perhaps those who are homeless. So we are really mindful of them uh, during this time. And let's take a minute with you, your family, or whoever you're gathered with uh, to take a time to pray. And if you would bow your heads with me. Great God of unfailing mercy and everlasting love, we praise you, we give you thanks, even in the midst of this storm. The Bible says the snow falls and fulfills your purpose, O Lord, from the book of Isaiah. May it also be that way for our lives. May we fulfill your purpose as well, no matter our circumstance. God, we do take time this morning to pray for the many millions of people who are in the way of the storm. We pray for the first responders who have to go out into the storm to help people. We pray for those who are running snow plows. We pray for those who are elderly or particularly anyone who is ill during this time and stuck at home. Watch over all of us, O oh God, we pray. Thank you for the warmth that we feel in our hearts, in our homes. We pray for our family, our friends. We pray for our church. And Lord, we pray that your will be done. Help us to extend your blessings to all those whom we know and to be ready to help at any time. We lift these things up in the quiet of our hearts and ask and trust in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The theme is God's everlasting love and the different ways that we can speak love to the people in our lives. So we're focused on relationships. And I think these messages mean more to you or actually are more practical or relevant when you find one or two relationships that you can focus on in your personal life. Think about it like a project. Like I want to improve. I want to do better loving this person in my life. And so take these insights. Uh, take a look at the companion book by Dr. Chapman, Five Love Languages. Take a look at the scriptures and find ways that you can act upon these ideas and improve the relationships in your life. Uh, certainly the Bible teaches us this. Medical research has proven that the quality of your life is directly proportional to the quality of the relationships you build in your life. So we're encouraging you to do that. I'm going to use a scripture that wasn't planned for today, so you may be looking at the helps online and find other scriptures which are great. But what I'm asking you to do is either by yourself in your devotion time or with your family, uh, take out the Bible and turn to Genesis chapter 12. The first four verses there will give you an idea of God calling Abram. Abram had no family. He was no person of any particular interest. And he was really from a nowhere place. But God called him for a very specific purpose in his life. And God began to bless him with a relationship with his wife, Sarah. Uh, and we know him as Abraham. God changed his name to Abraham after this chapter, but you'll find it listed as Abram in Genesis 12. And, and it really began with this, this promise from God that, that God would provide a, a multitude of family for Abram. And he had no idea how that could be possible, but God makes all things possible. So the key verse in Genesis 12, uh, verse 3, it says, God is saying to Abraham, I will bless you so that you will be a blessing to others. The idea is that God blesses and gifts all of us. All of us have gifts. And so God is the source of blessing, the source of gifts, the motivation for us to bless and give to others. So speak love by giving someone a gift this week. Uh, one of the ideas I had on this is that gifts can just be simple. I think about the phrase, simple gifts, which is actually an old shaker tune that became uh, hymns in our church life. And you might, during your time, uh, if you can, look up that song, uh, Simple Gifts. You may know it from Aaron Copeland's great classic, uh, Appalachian Spring, 
It's a good time to mention spring, isn't it? Uh, but look up that song as part of your devotion life, and it's a wonderful tune. But it reminds me that gifts can sim be simple. Uh, simple gifts mean so much because they come from the heart. Find a way to speak your love by giving an unexpected gift to someone in your life. Um, it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be on a holiday for it to be a meaningful gift. A gift is simply something tangible that the person can hold and say, you know what, she was thinking of me, or he took time to do this for me. It speaks to your consideration, your thoughtfulness, and your care for someone. It is the case that the thought does count when you give a simple gift to someone else. Um, so may it be a gift for no reason at all, uh, not on a planned occasion, but something where you might surprise someone in your life with something thoughtful. Uh, here's the homework for the week. Make it a point to give a simple gift to someone that you know and love. It could be a handmade, unique, original thing that you come up with that, that speaks so much about how you feel and how you care about someone. It, it could be yourself, a gift of yourself, just being there, listening, connecting with someone that you care about. And time together can be a gift. I know. Have, have, have you even thought for a moment that this blizzard could be a gift? That we have this time together in our homes, perhaps with someone we love or with our whole family. <clears throat> Maybe 48, 72 hours from now it may not feel like a gift exactly, but think about it as time together and a way of being a gift of yourself to someone else that you care about. So I'm going to give you one last example, because this came to me as an idea from one friend, and then later on a tangible gift. Uh, that idea came to life from another friend. Uh, a friend of mine in this church said to me a, a couple years ago, she said, how about a blessing bowl? It's a way of having all of the blessings that happen in your life collected in one place. And I shared that with a couple that I'm preparing to marry this year. And, and around Christmas time, they actually gave it to me as a gift. I'll show you it here. So this is really neat. The idea is that it's not a fishbowl, okay? <laughs> it's a blessing bowl. And in it came these little strips of paper. Uh, this person had wrapped it up in a little bow. Uh, and we put a pen in there. And our family, when something good happens, you have a good day, you have something to remember, you write it down as a blessing on one of these strips of paper. And you leave it in there. And then if you have a day where, well, some days aren't as good as others, right? You want to just pull these out and count your blessings. But what it reminds me is that all of us have gifts. Each one of us, well, we can be a gift to someone else. You've been blessed so that you will be a blessing for someone else. Give a simple gift. Use something thoughtful, something creative in your life to touch someone else's life this week. And may God's love, God's everlasting love, be the source of your gifts for others. In that way, you speak that love. You embody that love. You act upon that love that comes from